North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money? And we know that this burden falls particularly in an unequal way on black folks and other people of color. And we just got to go ahead and put that in the testimony as well. Like if you, yes, and especially black women, and if you are poor or among the working poor or the barely middle class in these United States of America, and you do what you were asked to do, what you were told to do, the thing, the very thing that you were told that was going to lift you up, and you do that thing, and then you find yourselves walking across a stage with a backpack full of debt in, on your back and debt in your hands and a degree, and it is immoral to do so, and we calling it out. You know what I'm saying? When I say hands up, I need you to say fight back. You ready? Hands up! Fight back! 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 Hey, welcome to Monday's show. Uh, so there's no mistake as far as the day goes. Anyway, uh, I've had a problem sometimes of actually saying what day it is. I've said you know the date and all that stuff, but that's pretty much it. Anyway, so I've been a self project as of late. Uh, I wanted to compile a um, a list of economists and professors who uh, are proficient, way more proficient than I am uh, in regards to monetary theory and in comparison to the mainstream economists out there. Basically, those who more than likely are so instilled in the financial establishment that someone uh, who... I forgot his name. Jim Kramer, I think his name is, uh, who does Mad Money. Now he knows these people intimately, but even but even he was he, even he was supposedly caught off guard by in the, by the house by the economic crisis of two thousand eight or two thousand seven two thousand eight. And I'm like, okay, well you're embedded in in this whole in, in a whole mainstream thing, and supposedly you didn't see it. Uh, I think he was on the. Uh, on the telecast that day that he had talked to the CEO of Bear Stearns, I think. And Bear and CEO Bear Stearns said everything's gonna be fine, all that stuff, and next thing you know, the whole thing crashed. Uh people lost their jobs, their housing, uh credit scores were diminished or the 401 ks were diminished. Uh our credit score as a as a country was diminished, uh which they blamed Obama, but Obama wasn't the, wasn't the factor behind it. Uh, I, I I also wanted to do a article um, about uh, the financial crisis, where it started, uh, what laws and policies that facilitated it. Then I I looked up what the uh, Glass-Steagall uh, law was. Uh, 
And it was to keep those same banks who created the downward spiral that was later known as the uh, as the uh, financial crisis. Uh, it, it was supposed to keep those separate so they couldn't uh, involve other people's money deposits, if you will, at that time and stuff of that nature. Uh, so that was so the financial crisis that happened, if it wasn't repealed in, in 1999, uh may have not been done the may have not happen in the first place other factors could have actually had um had put in place you know in 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 due time uh but when they repealed that in 1999 um bill clinton hillary clinton uh and from what i from what i remember i think even elizabeth warren has said that she had showed uh, Hillary Clinton because apparently was Warren was teaching at Harvard at the time. I think it was a visiting professor or some to that effect, um, and was teaching economics and I think um, economics and something else I forget. But anyway, so uh, apparently, and I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing the interview that that Elizabeth Warren did. I think it was just after the uh, the financial crisis or the first time that she was trying to run for president. Um, she claimed that she uh, has showed uh, Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton, what what would happen if Glass Steagall was repealed. <clears throat> and lo not long after that, Glass Steagall was repealed. And then you had different uh, investment uh, banks uh, buy out mortgage lenders, and you had mortgage lenders buy out. Uh, insurance companies and you know it all became one which if you if you monopolize one or more uh, industries shit will break down eventually especially if someone does the wrong thing you know like underwriting the uh, underwriting something or some side effect anyway so i wanted to compare a little bit um uh, the MMT economists are those that I know of are, or at least are on the cusp or at the very least uh, uh, agree with uh, the foundation behind MMT versus uh, the regular economists. Now, I bring this up, uh, Vox uh, CEPR, uh, because I wanted to find out if, if there was any, you know, uh, if, they, if, if nobody really knew about this. So... Now, I'm also going to be doing an article, whether it be uh, published on Real Progressives, that has, to be, that has yet to be seen, because um, never done one for them anyway, uh, or it would be on my Substack, calvintaylor.substack.com. Either way, check out both. Uh, both are quality products, or both are quality, quality content anyway. But this is one of the one of the few pages that I did find that did have uh, a list of people who were right and when they were right, as far as like you know, uh, when they predicted it or to, to whatever extent. Anyway, so let me kind of go up here again and kind of read this. Uh, this is from 2009, so a year after, um, from the very beginning of the credit crisis and the ensuing recession. It has become conventionally conventional wisdom that no one saw this coming. Uh, I'm not sure if I can write, write, read this very well, but I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, Anata Anatola uh, Kalinsky, again, I apologize if I, if I got that wrong, uh, in 2008 wrote in the, uh, in the times of those who failed to foresee the gravity of this crisis. A group that includes Mr. King, Mr. Brown, Alistair Darling, uh, Alan Greenspan, almost every leading economist and finan financier in the world, Glenn Stevens, 2008, governor of the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, said, and in, in quotes, if you're listening to this, I do not know anyone who predicted this course of events that should give us cause to reflect on how hard a job it is to make general, genuinely useful forecasts. What we have seen is truly a, a, a Fail outcome, or fail, no, maybe it's probably fail, it looks like a T, fail outcome, uh, the kind of outcomes that the routine forecasting process never predicts. But it has occurred, it has implications, and we must re reflect on it. We must indeed. 
So what now for economic meddling, modeling, whatever the heck it is. It was like meddling me, but anyway. Uh, one result from such reflection would be that, in fact, many had predicted this course of events for years. In a recent study, Bessemer 2009, uh, I documented that economists who did see it coming, at least a dozen series and uh, analysts issued fairly detailed, well-seasoned uh, reasons, excuse me, could be seasoned as well, uh, well-reasoned and public warnings of imminent financial induced recession. They were apparently uh, uh, they were apparently ignored by Stevens and other central bankers who then, as Alan Greenspan professed in his October 2008 testimony, watched with shocked uh, but disbelief as their whole intellectual uh, edifice uh, collapsed in the summer of 2007. The official models they relied on mess, missed the crisis not because uh, the conditions were so unusual as we all as we all often told uh, we are all often told they missed it by design. It is impossible to warn against a debt deflation recession in a model world where debt does not exist. This is the world in which our policymakers have been living. And they urgently need to change habit or habitat. The question that the economist profession, the profession now needs to address is where to? If our routine forecasting models and CGE models mostly fail to foresee this, where do we look for alternatives? The types of models that go uh, that got it right. The Bessemer 2009 I documented the models that got it right. The important question for economists is how did they do? How did they do it? What is the underlying model? And if you're seeing this on camera, uh, then you, you know, you'll see the, uh, the table one. Um, but let me get this done. Uh, let's see. While there is obviously a diversity of approaches, one important strand of thinking is an accounting of financial stocks, debt and wealth, and flows uh, of credit, uh, interest, profit, and wages, as well as explicit analysts of both uh, the real economy and the financial sector, including property. The most detailed uh, of these, market, uh, these models, rather, which has also been used to construct public projections and analysis are flow of funds models of the U.S. developed by Wynn Godley, who last I checked is actually one of the found, founding people, founders of it, of MMT, Wynn Godley and Associates at Levy uh, Econ uh, Economics Institute. These may serve as par uh, pars pro toto for the class of flow of funds models of real financial interactions, uh, e.g. also uh, Werner, 97, uh, Graziani, 2003, Hudson, uh, 2006, Keen, 2009, uh, simplified closed e uh, economy representation of Godley, 99, consists of stocks and flows of a number of, of assets, classes between four sectors explicitly separately or separating out the financial sector uh, with their properties and interrelations represented in over 60 uh, equations, uh, godly, and for all symbols. Okay, so basically what you have is consumption, uh, which is minus C, which is consumption, uh, plus C for cur uh, firms, current, uh, no capital, uh, is the government uh, uh, minus, uh, yeah, okay, so consumption minus, uh, plus consumption minus G. That's the government expenditure plus G, uh, then you have minus G on government uh, expenditure. Yeah, this these kind of things are confusing to me overall. Um, but I, I kind of get what they're going with that. But it's still confusing to me. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, so yeah. 
Uh, this is uh, supposed to be the flow of funds in matrix representation. So let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Households was, uh, okay, yeah. I need a little more as far as MMT to understand that. Anyway, so <laughs> flow of funds models and flow of funds models, equity, uh, liquidity, excuse me, generated in the financial sector plus uh, uh, sectors flows to firms, households, and the government as they borrow. This may facilitate fixed capital investment and production, but it may also feed as asset price inflation, consumption, and debt growth. The liquidity returns to the financial sector as financial environment uh, investments or in payment of debt services and financial fees. Key features of flow of, of flow of funds models are thus bank credit flows since in uh, evolving finance finance in the form of bank loans uh, is required if product production is to be financed. This is uh, from uh, Godly uh, 99, uh, just page 405, not sure. Also, there are explicit payment flows such as interest, not quite the same as the national accounts, where it is standard flows such as interest, not quite the same. Okay, I've already read that one. Standard practice to ignore interest payments, although they are an they are a definite cost given that production takes time. The model is solved by imposing macro accounting identities and adaptive expectations rather than individual optimization. There is a steady state, but not uh, equilibrium. One advantage is that growth paths can be identified as unsustainable given the existing bedrock accounting relations. This allowed Godley and Ray uh, in 2002, which is uh, L. Randall Ray, uh, to conclude another, by the way, another MMT here, uh, in 2002, conclude that Goldilocks was doomed with the government surplus and current account deficit. U.S. economy or economic growth had to be predicated on ongoing and unsustainable high rates of private debt growth. Uh, what's missing from the mainstream models, the this uh, inference is impossible to make from a national or OECD forecasters models where balance sheet variables or interest flows are conspicuous by their absence. These CGE models do not include a separate financial sector ruling out financial induced and recession by design. Many supply and interest rate variables are included in those models, but they are fully determined by real sector variables such as output gap. Also, the process of money stock growth or asset market inflation by bank lending, which increases debt levels and elicits return to flows of that interest are not modeled. This, uh, this, fits in, this fits in with reflective finance view. The financial sector, rather, then developing its own dynamic is assumed to adapt and to assume to adapt to the real fundamentals so that explicit explicitly model modeling it is super uh, super bliss, super plus. anyway the contrast with actual existing finance re induces recession should lead forecasters to reconsider their models Interestingly, they have been moved moves in recent. There have been moves in recent years towards including balance sheets and the flows of funds in official models. Ray and Turner, uh, I think it's a uh, Warner Turner, or someone like that uh, right that in introducing alternative uh, assumptions allows a little more economic richness to be temporarily added to the OECD small global fire forecasting model when it is used for policy analysis especially for those situations in which financial markets and expectations play important roles in the transmission of shocks within and before re or between re regions in addition to its ad hoc adjustment to the reality of balance sheet 
effects, the OECD appears to be working on a new interlink model triggered by changing conditions and including domestic and global stock flow consistency with respect to wealth leakages and wealth effects, uh, which is uh, from Richards out uh, of 2006. Very similar in name of least to Godley's stock flow consistent model, Godley and Lavoie, uh, 2006. So far, however, monetary and other policymakers have resisted inclusion of balance sheets and the flow of funds in their models and policy responses. Greenspan famously preferred to mitigate the fallout from it occurs uh, occurs and hopefully ease the transition to the next expansion. But the, under, the underestimation of the severity of the fallout global recession uh, throws the uh, desirability of the transition to the next expansion and to double uh, into doubt if it is to be driven by debt accumulation. Also, the argument that bubbles cannot be timely and uh, identified, nor their effects of reliable anticipation, is rebutted by uh, the analysis reviewed in my paper, who did uh, who did both. Conclusion: While while the jury is still out on the question whether CGE models and flow of funds models can be married. Exploring these avenues is not urgent. Benjamin Friedman recently noted that what is sorely missing is the discussion, uh, is attention to what function the financial system is supposed to perform in the economy and how well it has been doing it. Flow of funds models provide just that. If the crisis and recession teach, teach us one thing, it is that the financial sector is just as real as a real economy. Uh, we economists and the policymakers who rely on us ignore balance sheets and the flow of funds at our peril. Now, this is the part, if you're seeing it, uh, references. Uh, Bessemer, uh, Dirk J. Bessemer, 2009. No one saw this coming. I think I just read that. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. Okay, I guess it was unpublished. Uh, CPB, 2009, Central e Economic Plan, 2009 in Dutch, I suppose. Anyway, so let's see. Now, the people that I know are uh, MMTers or at least... Um, they they are the, on the cusp of being MMTers. No, uh, in other words, knowing what MMT is about as far as the lens to look through, uh, but yet still kind of kind of are on the mainstream economist side of things as well. Uh, William Godley, I believe, is uh, kind of one of the founding one of the founding um, illustrators of MMT. Uh, so, um, William Godley. Then you have um, oh, Randall Ray, as I said. Uh, now, now, Alan Greenspan is usually a uh, reference point as far as the uh, as far as the, uh, the money portion of things. He, he was a, he was one of the first ones to acknowledge that taxpayers don't finance any real policy. Uh, he he admitted that under oath after. Who was it? Oh, um, something Ryan. I forgot his name. No, not was it Paul Ryan? No, Paul Ryan asked if uh, if privatizing Social Security would have been a more would have been a better way of saving the uh, the the, uh, the program. Alan Greenspan then uh, I'm paraphrasing uh, came back and said, "There's no there's." Uh, no reason. There's no reason why we can't uh, print out more money and pay it to whomever. It's the natural resources. Again, I'm paraphrasing that uh, is dependent on who wants to on who who's pretty much going to take it as far as as uh, as a way of uh, buying a product, uh, buying a resource, whatever the case may be. Anyway, I uh, see Michael Hudson. Uh, he's another one of them that is um, that is basically an MMTer. Matthew Forsetter, I actually I, I I was happy to uh, to interview him for about a half hour sometime last year. I, I'm still hoping to be able to do that. Stephen Keane, who is currently running uh, for a higher office in Australia, check him out. Uh, let's see, <clears throat> let's see what who else? Uh, 
I think P. Richardson is also MMT or uh Werner, I believe, is one of the, one of the few that is still oh, that that I'm not sure if he's still around or not. Actually, I'm think of it, but anyways, he's he's MMT or as well uh, overall. Uh, so it looks like, at least to me anyway, it looks like we do actually have more MMTers than we have anything else in regards to uh, knowing the financial crisis was was coming. Um, but I may I may have miscounted there, but anyway. That was what I wanted to say as far as that part goes. So uh, I will have more uh, coming up. Uh, thank you for watching thus far and stick around. Peace out for now. Hey, welcome back. Another thing I wanted to kind of go over a little bit uh, and because it has been this has been so much a part of the both both uh both parties have talked about national debt and all that other stuff. Uh I wanted to get to who owns the US national debt, uh public debt and intergovernmental debt, uh holdings, uh, because holdings is a lot better term and more truthful than saying debt. Because debt to anybody else means you have to pay it back. Uh, debt does not necessarily mean a reinvestment. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's you know um, it's something that that you know that we as we as citizens own anybody or owe anybody. I mean, uh, in this case, debt is literally just just the finance. It's money. You know that's that sort of thing. So because I guess the U.S. dollar is considered a IOU. An IOU is typically uh, known as the as a as a debt. Um, however, since you since the same country that uh, owns that IOU and proceeds to put it out in the in the general economy, then the debt is itself a financial tool. So it's not in the most definite is not in the definition of the word debt. Or how it's usually used in a daily in a in a in a daily life sort of way. Uh, like in other words, I in a, a day or so, I will I will have a debt to my landlord. That is debt I have to pay. Okay, that is that is you know that is a a a debt that I I owe someone so that I can have a house or you know have a roof over my head that sort of thing. That is what you call debt, but it's debt that is going to be payable soon, as far as that part goes. Anyway, so let's see. This is by uh, Kimberly Amadeo, Amade, uh, February of this year, so it's fairly recent. Social Security Trust Fund owns a significant portion of U.S. national debt, but how does that work and what does it mean? Below, and it'll go in momentarily. Two types of national debt. The U.S. national debt crest 30 trillion in er, in early 2022 meaning that's that's investment and other things of that nature and in this case the private debt uh it's mostly held by banks you know like jp morgan chase owns uh, uh owns treasury every pretty much every single bank that is accredited by the F fdic uh i think it's fdic uh holds debt in treasuries you know, ious in treasuries that sort of thing the u.s national debt crested 30 trillion um let's see they are break, breaking down the national debt intergovernment holdings are six trillion five hundred two million or billion uh 537 uh total held by public which is basically just banks uh is Twenty-three trillion six hundred twenty-nine billion two hundred and twenty-one. I guess anyway. Let's see. Intergovernment debt. Uh, the Treasury owes this part of the debt to other uh, federal agencies. Intergovernmental holdings total uh, totaled more than six point five trillion in February of this year. Uh, why would the government owe money to itself? Because some agencies like Social Security Trust Fund take in more revenue than taxes that they than they need. These agencies then invest in U.S. Treasuries rather than stick the cash under a uh, giant mattress. In other words, the Treasuries, which have 
interest bearing treasuries, which means that they get paid twice a year on in interest, uh, which the Fed, which is a net payer of said interest, has to pay into Social Security fund as far as that part goes. So despite what Republicans have said in the past, and despite what everybody else keeps friggin' talking about, Social Security has, if it, it, the only way that it can go bankrupt is that treasuries stop paying out yield and whatever taxes are able to be put in uh, are lessened like every year um, to the point where it would fail, like according to policy anyway, uh, and like by, 20, by 2040 or whatever else. Uh, that was one bad thing as far as the legislation that happened back in the day when they said that Social Security is funded by uh, the FICA tax. They shouldn't have put that in because they they should just they should have just sat there and said that it will always be sovereign uh, a, a sovereign account because we can do that. We can afford to do that. We are the currency issuer as far as the U.S. government goes. <clears throat> so. Just go to uh, the balance. I'll put the. Uh, I will uh, put the link in the description below for any naysayers, for anybody who doesn't believe this shit or who does believe this shit. Um, I'll put that in there, and I will keep on looking for for the links just that says that. Uh, yeah. So when interest rates go up, as far as treasuries go. Like what Mike Norman said on what on 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 one of his uh, a couple of his uh, his videos, since <laughs> since the Fed is the interest rate payer, they pay in they pay the interest into the into the uh, treasuries into the U.S. treasuries. That's what Social Security basically has at this moment is treasuries, and they owe a lot of treasuries. So anyway, uh, that's why I got. That's what I wanted to say as far as that part goes. Well, later on on my Substack, again that's Calvin Taylor dot Substack. I will, I will have some other stuff up uh, in regards to what I'm reading and stuff in nature. Anyway, so uh, if you like what you hear, uh, what you saw here. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, please support with a like, share, comment if you feel, and uh, go to realprogressives.org and support them as well. Uh, they do a lot of great work. And uh, you know what? I will go ahead and see what they have. Going, see what they have up there. Let's see. So yeah, check these guys out as well. Uh, as you can see, there's plenty of ways to donate if you want. Let's see. Biden abuses emergency powers. Uh, yet the Biden administration has not used emergency powers to fight climate change or provide COVID relief. Uh, Colorado accepts crypto to pay taxes. I actually, I believe I read this a couple of days ago. Last week at some point, I forgot. Uh, same thing with this one. I read, I read this one. Both are tremendous uh, authors. Uh, Get and give them a try. In fact, give them this whole thing a try. Uh, they do um, uh, interviews as well. Uh, Steve Grumbine, uh, who is the founder of Real Progressives and a big time MMT -er. Um uh, He's done interviews with people about uh, Mao. I think it's like three, uh, three uh, episodes of that series. Uh, they also have eCash Act um, stuff of that nature. So check them out as well. Um, Let's see what else we have got going on. They have the basics here as far as MMT goes. What is MMT and how could it in the nation with? Uh, uh, let's see, they have everything between. I just I talked about the Colorado accepts uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see uh, where to start learning about MMT by Steve D. Grumbine himself. This was from uh, earlier this year, March actually, this this, uh, this past month. There we go. Anyway. So let's see. We also have let's see. Da, da, da. Now this is what uh, uh, 
Warren Moser sent me uh, via Twitter because I, again, I was uh, as I did uh, as I said earlier, I was trying to compile the difference between uh, um, uh, well what what happened uh, after Glass Steagall was repealed, and the last thing they did was the Dodd Frank. Uh, you see, uh, the Basel Accord, like Dodd and Frank, uh, Dodd and Frank doesn't know beans about banking. Uh, bank capital rules are irrelevant for uh, world growth. Uh, bank capital arises indigenously from the, ec the economy to meet regulatory needs. Uh, banks price loans to realize risk, adjust rates of return needed to raise any need in the capital. Let's see. So yeah, this is uh, MoserEconomics.com. So if you want to check it out, this is from 2010, in fact, um, apparently. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah. Uh, thanks for checking me out if you did. Um, I hope you were impressed, or if at the very least, I did not, uh, I didn't do a, such a bad job reading, or at least uh, trans translating uh, what I was reading. Either way, I oh, hope you guys have a good day. Uh, check me out on calvinatino.substack.com. And also, you, uh, you can check this shirt out on teespring.com. Um, <laughs> anyway, have a good day. Peace out for now. Morning. In the UK, we have the National Health Service. Yes, you bloody do, and I'm marvelous. very jealous. Absolutely bloody marvelous. How you put up with this shit, I do not know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of money, incredible. It. Yeah, exactly. Money, money, money. Probably money talk. Yeah. Money talk. Yeah, it's a class war, isn't it? Keep up the good work. Yes. Yeah. I know they moan about our NHS, but it's wonderful. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah, Doesn't I matter mean, who you are, what you are, anything at all. Absolutely. There we are. This is not the country to get.